G'day. I recently posted the following puzzle on Twitter. Start by drawing a great big one by one square. There it is, a square of area one. Now connect the midpoints of its sides to make a tilted square within that square. Great. And connect the midpoints of its sides now to make a non-tilted square within that tilted square within the big square. And let's keep doing that, connecting midpoints of the sides to make a tilted square, and then a non-tilted square, and then a tilted square, then a non-tilted square, then a tilted square, then a non-tilted square, and keep doing this forever. Okay, so after that eternity of time, I'd like you to now pick up a different colored marker and start coloring some of these triangles. Let's color in the top left corner triangle of the original big square. There it is in dark blue, hopefully that's showing. Actually, let me do it in a different color blue, let's try a lighter blue. All right, there we go, oh, that's better, good, all right. And then go to the next non-tilted square and color in its top left corner triangle. Go to the next non-tilted square, color in its to uh, top left corner triangle, and keep doing that. There's infinitely many of them, so another infinite amount of work. All right, so after that double eternity of work, we now actually ask the question. Going back and look at this whole big picture, what fraction of the original big square is now colored blue? What's the sum of all these blue areas right here in this picture? That's the challenge. In fact, the real challenge is, let's see if we can answer that question six different ways. Are you up for it? It seems that people who know a lot of mathematics tend to answer this question the same way. They see an infinite collection of triangles, therefore the area will be an infinite sum of areas, and they'll work out that infinite sum. So let's do that. That'll be our solution number one. Uh, to get us going, uh, let me get a sense of what the first area has to be. Work at the area of that triangle, plus the area of that triangle, and so on. What's the area of that very first triangle? So let me just redraw the picture. I'll draw it in white this time. So um, I'll just draw the first tilted square, because right there is the tri first triangle. We need to know its area. All right, great. Um, let's see. The way to do that, to see what that area is right there, is actually draw in some more lines. Because as soon as you do this, draw in these pair of lines here, you see, oh, the whole square is divided into eight congruent triangles. Therefore, the area is one eighth of a square unit. Great, we're on our way. The area we seek is actually, whoops, area we seek is one eighth plus, well, the next triangle, the next triangle, the next triangle, and so on. So we're going to work out those. Uh, but before we do that, let me just point something out about this tilted square here. You can see it's actually composed of four of those triangles out of all eight. So this tilted square has half the area of the original square. All right which means the tilted square within it, which for us is now not tilted, this, this inner square here is half the area of the tilted square, which is half the area of the big square. This next non-tilted square is one quarter of the original square. All right, in area. Great. One quarter of the area of the original square, in which case, its matching piece here, duh, 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 must be one quarter of the matching piece up there. Ah, so the area of the next triangle is actually one quarter of one eighth. And then by the same work, this triangle must be one quarter of that, so it's going to be one quarter of one quarter of one eighth. And the next one's going to be one quarter of one quarter of one quarter of one eighth, and so on, and we've got our infinite sum uh, written in hieroglyphics. All right, but let me write this a little more neatly, so let me give myself some more space. Goodbye to this picture, and let's work out that infinite sum. All right, so what have we got? We've got a factor of one eighth everywhere, leaving a one behind, and a quarter behind, and a quarter squared behind, and a quarter cubed behind, and so on forever. Oh, that's a geometric series, great. So I know the formula for that infinite sum. It's gonna be one over one minus one quarter. Uh, let's multiply the de denominator through by eight. I can see it's one over eight minus two. It's one six. The area we seek, the area of all those blue triangles, uh, constitutes one-sixth of the total area. Okay, we got the answer. But I look at that and think, whoa, whoa, one-sixth? Really? One-sixth? I mean, this is a picture with four-fold symmetry. Why would the number one-sixth come out of this? Yes, I can believe the math, but I don't have any intuition for what's going on here. Hmm. Um, okay, All right, that was answer number one, but it doesn't feel satisfying to me. Uh, while I'm here, let me just point out answer number two. It's actually how I first thought about this problem. Uh, I didn't quite do the whole geometric series work, but I did something similar. I said, okay, as soon as I realized that this, here it goes, let's get rid of all that. 
that this first tilted square is one quarter of the whole square in area. Now I can say, oh, the whole area is going to be one eighth, as I said before, plus the rest of it. But look at the rest of it. It's the same picture again at one quarter of the area. Oh, that's just a copy of the whole, the whole picture, one quarter of the area. So this formula, the whole area must be one eighth plus one quarter of its whole area. Bingo, let's now multiply through by eight. And I see that eight times the area is a one plus two times the area. Uh, six times the area is one. There it is. The area is one six. We've got it. There it is, grand. But again, I have no geometric intu intuition for that. Why, how could I possibly see one six coming out of this picture of a square with fourfold symmetry? All right, so can we get a geometrically uh, intuitive solution to this now? Let's try it. Okay, here comes solution number three, a geometric approach. Let's see if we can see why it needs to be a factor of one six for that area. All right, um, I'm going to draw the pictures again. So here's the square. But to get six involved, instead of cutting at midpoints, let me cut each side into three-way points, into thirds. All right, let's just do that. And I'm going to connect each of those points and the corners with the center point of the square. So I'm going to draw triangles everywhere, lots of triangles. In fact, I can see it's going to be, there's three triangles, there'll be another three, and there'll be another three, another three, and that makes 12 triangles. There's 12 triangles that I'm drawing right here. Great, great. This triangle here has a base of one third and a height half the side length. This triangle here has the same base, one third, and height half the side length. And so is this one. So each of these triangles have the same area, and it's going to be one half times one third times a half. That's a twelfth. That's one twelfth the area. That's one twelfth the area. That's one twelfth the area. By the same token, that's also one twelfth the area. All these triangles have the same area. They're one twelfth of the whole square. Great! Which means, oh, one twelfth and one twelfth, that means all of this, a twelfth and a twelfth, is one sixth of the area of the whole square. Okay, there's one sixth of the area of the square. How does that region relate to the region I seek? All right. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, make my picture here very messy. Let me draw in these two triangles by drawing in those uh, third way lines. So there's a third of the way, a third of the way, and it connects to the center, something like this, something like this, and then connect the corner. Beautiful. All right, all right, so what's going on here? Uh, let's see. Well, I see that's the length one third. That's the length one half. Therefore, this little section right here must be one sixth in length. All right, that's fine. I claim this little section here is also one sixth in length. And let's think about this. I can see here doo -doo -doo -doo, this triangle. This triangle here with that little section there that I seek, which I claim is one sixth. Look at that triangle right there. It's divided into a smaller triangle, boom, and a bigger triangle, boom. But I know this smaller triangle is one quarter the area of the big triangle. Remember, we've got the scale of one quarter of the area right there. That's one quarter of the area of the big triangle. So the area is scaling by a factor of one quarter, which means uh, linear lengths are scaling by a factor of a half. OK. So this length here, by similar triangle, must be half that length there. That length there is a third. Half of a third is a six. That length there is a six. That length there is a six. Those two fuzzy segments there are the same length. Grand. Because once I've got that, I can see, oh, 45 degrees, 45 degrees. Verticals, angles, there we are. These two triangles are similar. In fact, they're congruent. They have the set common side length. So this blue area here is the same as that area there. In fact, let me erase that blue area and say, OK, I don't need the area of that triangle. I can replace it with the area of that triangle instead. Did I can erase the area of this triangle, by exactly the same reasoning, with the area of that triangle instead. And now I can see when I go down to the next level, I'm doing exactly the same work. I can replace the area of this triangle, whoop, there, which is not much there, and the area of that triangle with the area of these pieces right there. Though my picture's really not to scale, but those pieces are congruent triangles. And I keep doing that. Erase this little corner piece and the little corner piece that I can't see because my picture's bad, da -da 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 -da, and do it all the way down for a different amount of time. And once eternity is up, I can see, oh, my blue areas actually do match this area precisely. Yes, the area is one sixth of the square. Grand. OK, let's see if we can ask this question a fourth way. OK, here comes solution number four. Here's the original picture, 
But this time, let's add a line to the picture. Let's add this line here. All right, when you do that, I see a little parallelogram right there. In fact, I see that this, these two triangles are cut in the same parallelogram in half. Therefore, this triangle is congruent to that triangle. So this blue area here matches this yellow area here. For the same token, there's another parallelogram there. So this blue area here matches that uh, area of this triangle here. All right, so right now, those two yellow triangles have the same area as that blue triangle right there. By the same token, these two triangles have the same area as that blue triangle there. All right, great, great, great. In fact, by the same token, these two triangles are the same area as that blue triangle there, and so on, and so on, and so on. I keep doing that for a long while. So right now, all the blue area is the same as all the yellow area in the picture. Grand. In fact, I could do the same thing over here. There's one copy of the area, a second copy of the area. Here's the third copy of the area. Let me draw the third copy of the area right here. I'll do it in blue because it kind of matches the same design as the other blue one. So there's three copies of the area I seek. And by the same token, uh, this, two, this triangle here equals those two areas. I, here comes a fourth copy of the area we seek. There's a, here it comes, do, 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 do this forever, 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 forever. Great. All right, so in the picture right now are four copies of the area we seek. And here comes another one. Uh, I'm running out of colors here. I'll do it in blue as well. Here's another blue area. Here's a fifth copy of the area we seek. There we go. And here's a sixth copy of the area we seek. There we go as well. And voila, we can see that the whole square now is filled up with six copies of the area we seek. Therefore, the area we seek is one sixth of the area of the whole square. Voila! All right, solution number five. Here it comes. Oh, five. You can count correctly, James. Five. Here it comes. Okay, let's see yet again that the area of this blue material inside the square is one sixth the entire area of the square. And this time I will draw this line again, but I'm going to do it for all four outer triangles. There it goes. And now I'm just going to look at the outer rim. Look, this looks like a picture frame. So here's the outer rim of the picture frame. And here's the inner rim of the picture frame. Great. And just look at this rim. And you see the rim has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 triangles, of which two are colored blue. Therefore, the blue is filling up one-sixth of the area of the outer rim. Then by the same token, the blue is filling up one-sixth of this next rim in. And the blue is filling up one-sixth of this next rim in, and so on. The blue fills up one-sixth of each rim in this picture. Therefore, the blue is filling up one-sixth of the entire picture. Whoa! So we have five ways to see the area of this blue region is one-sixth of the entire area of the square. Fabulous and wonderful. We can do it purely mathematically, or we get some geometric intuition to see where that number one-sixth comes from. In fact, there are so many different ways to look at this picture and see the answer one-sixth. So I'm going to make the sixth solution a challenge for you. Can you come up with yet another way to view this picture and see that the area has to be one-sixth the entire area? A beautiful challenge. I'm really charmed by this puzzle, and I thank all my Twitter followers for actually coming up with wonderful, innovative ways to see the areas 1-6. I'm looking forward to seeing your way of seeing it too.